Don't stay in tomorrow. You've got to, at some point, move from tomorrow to right now. You can't just sit at home and imagine a Lamborghini and it pulls up into the driveway and somebody gives you the keys. What if your default emotion was gratitude all the time? What if it was joy all the time? Now you might get pushed and get stressed out for a minute, but you come back to joy. What doesn't kill you does make you stronger. That doesn't mean it doesn't hurt, it hurts. But it makes you stronger. He's been a leader in the network marketing industry for almost 30 years. He's built a sales organization totaling over 500,000 distributors in over 60 countries. He's the author of the international best-selling book, Go Pro. He's Eric Worre, and here's my take on his top 10 rules to success. Rule number three is my personal favorite, and I'd love to know which one you guys like the best. And as always, guys, as you're watching the videos, if you hear something that really resonates with you, please leave it down in the comments below and put quotes around it so other people can be inspired as well. Also, as you are writing something down, it's much more likely to stick in your head too. Enjoy. Tomorrow, someday, next week, I'm about to. This is the language that I hear a lot in network marketing. Tomorrow I'm gonna to get started. Tomorrow I'm gonna to schedule some appointments. After the weekend, I'm really gonna kick it. When the new month starts, I'm gonna make it happen. Once I get past this birthday, then I'm really gonna take off. Once the kids get out of school, then I'm gonna focus on this. Once the kids get back into school after the summer break, then I'm gonna do it. After the holidays, then I'm gonna make it happen. Now, here's the thing. People do a lot of talking, and one side of proclaiming what you're gonna do is very good, telling the world what you're about to do, so, telling them something that you haven't done yet. That's a very healthy thing, because it will hold you accountable to those statements. But don't get stuck there. Don't stay in tomorrow. You've got to, at some point, move from tomorrow to right now. Move from the action that you're gonna do on Monday to right now, not even today, because that gives you all the time until the end of the day. You've gotta move your clock. When you think about, here's one thing I need to do, I need to schedule more appointments, I'm gonna do that right now. Right now, the first available moment I have to do it, I'm gonna do it right now, I'm gonna start right now, I'm gonna get moving right now. Because a lot of you are listening to this stuff, and that's great, listening is great. Understanding is even better. Action is even better than understanding. You can have the most knowledgeable person in the world, but if they keep saying tomorrow, 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 they're never going to get the results that they're looking for. So guess where most of the learning and most of the real understanding comes from? In the doing. A lot of people think that they understand network marketing and they can never understand what it is that you do every day because they've never done it. You understand really on a cellular level when you do it. And if you continue with action, you'll start to get results from those actions. Because it's not just in the doing once, it's the doing and then refining, doing again and then refining. Work getting better every single day. Understanding that you can't look good and get better at the same time. Being willing to be uncomfortable. Being willing to get outside of your comfort zone. Being willing to go from a tomorrow person to a right now person. My future plan is about this thick, typed. It's usually about 40 pages or so. And it includes everything. And today more than ever, what you find with top leaders, what you find with successful people, is they're, they're forward thinking, they're future thinking, and that, that future starts to pull them towards those objectives. So I set my goals pretty high, and I've set my calendar far in advance. I'm planning, I still have some spontaneity, room for spontaneity, but more and more as the, the, the demands on my time are, are growing exponentially, I have to plan. And, and what I've, I've done this for, gosh, 
25 years? So look back and look forward. Look back, take inventory, be honest, and look forward and map it out. So I want you to think about short-term, mid-term, long-term goals for you personally and for your team. Create an environment that supports your goals, your dreams. What do I mean by that? Make sure the people around you are pushing you in the direction of your dreams. Not patting you on the back for doing less than you're capable, but pushing you to do more. Make sure the things you're feeding your mind are pushing you in the direction of your dreams. Make sure that you're protecting your mind from things that would distract you from your dreams. It's your job, it's your job to create a bubble, to create an environment, to create this ecosystem that will support your goals. Because if, if you're surrounded by people that are constantly distracting you, it's gonna be very difficult for you to grow a network marketing business. If you're surrounded by people who are patting you on the back for doing one-tenth of what you're capable of instead of pushing you and challenging you and getting in your face, then there's only so far you can go. If you're constantly feeding your mind and allowing your mind to be infected by negative, pessimistic, compromising thoughts, then you can guess what your results are gonna be. So guess whose job? It's not, you're, you're not trying to look for an environment that will support you. you. Your job is to create an environment that will support you. Create this community around you. Create the right friendships, the right mentoring, the right coaching, the right ideas, the right encouragement, the right challenge for you to be able to go where you need to go. You understand what I'm saying? So it's your job to hold yourself accountable and create systems to hold yourself accountable to a higher standard. Your dreams are worth it, I promise. If you're frustrated and you don't know why you can't take action, this is the big reason why. You can't seem to get things going, this is why. So one, determine those dreams, get them lock solid. Two, hold yourself accountable towards them. And three, create a system around you of people and influences around you that will challenge you, that will push you, that will force you sometimes to do the things necessary to make your dreams a reality. I've had to evolve so many times. I've had to change and grow so many times. There's been times when I made such huge mistakes in my network marketing career. Damaged relationships, done things that I wish I could go back and change, but I couldn't. So I could either live there or I could use that information to grow and become better. See, I've been involved for 25 years and I promise you, every year that you, that we're engaged, we're working together, every year you're gonna see me get a little bit better and a little bit better. And most of the time I'm not gonna hit my goals, but then I'm gonna get a little bit better and a little bit better and compound it over time, you'll see noticeable results. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm a different person than I was five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, certainly 25 years ago, 18 jobs, you know, barely surviving. So give yourself some grace. Understand that nothing is ever finished while you're still alive. But here's what I believe is the most powerful force, one of the most powerful forces on earth, and that is your imagination. What you can imagine. Now most people misuse their imagination. In other words, they think about what bad things could happen. They let their imagination go wild to the negative side how they could get hurt, how they could get rejected, what could, you know, all, all the terrible things that could happen. Um, but the most successful people, um, and, and I will tell you, I've used this in my life for my whole life, and it's, well, my whole adult career at least, and it's worked unbelievable, is using your imagination for good, using it for growth. Now, here's what I, what I, what I mean by that. If you pick a goal, whatever it is, Let's say you want to meet someone. Let's say you want to achieve a rank. Let's say you want to get to an income goal. Let's say you want to have a certain number of people in your group at the next company event, whatever it is, okay? I want you to clearly imagine it. Get it so clear in your mind that it's like you're living it in reality. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? As clear as you can get it. And when you're talking about what, the, what this, this, uh, this picture in your mind, it's good to put it in writing 
And it's good to make it as, as detailed as you possibly can. How do you feel now that you've achieved that goal? How many lives are you impacting now that you've accomplished that objective? Whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is. But the key is detail. The key is specifics. The key is a clear, crystal clear mental picture. So get it clear and then just go about your life. But here's here's what what ends up happening. And it's happened to me so many times you can't even imagine. Uh, As soon as I get it clearly in my mind, it's not long before that thing becomes a reality. Now, it's not a magic trick. Okay, you can't just sit at home and imagine a Lamborghini and it pulls up into the driveway and somebody gives you the keys. It's not a magic trick like that. Um, Here's why I believe it works. Your subconscious brain is working all the time, no matter what you're doing. It's working. It's 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 helping you guide and, and shift and make different decisions. But if you get a clear picture in your mind, I believe you unlock the power of your subconscious mind. And when you unlock the power of your subconscious mind, it starts to grind and grind and grind and grind to make the picture that you have in your imagination a reality. And there starts to be thousands of what I like to call micro decisions that start to happen. Little left turn, right turn, little course corrections, thousands of them that are happening all the time. While you sleep, your subconscious brain is, is working to help you guide you towards that objective. If you're mowing the lawn, if you're doing the laundry, yet subconscious mind is working. If your imagination is strong enough and clear enough, your subconscious mind is working and working and grinding and grinding and moving. It's not like you're attracting those things to you. You're attracting yourself to those things because your subconscious mind is working for you. It's like a slave for you, working and grinding and working and grinding and working and grinding to help you get to your objective. Thousands and thousands of little decisions. You didn't even know why you made them. They were made because, one, you had a clear picture in your mind. Two, your subconscious brain went to work without you even realizing it. And three, step by step, inch by inch, you moved closer to your objective until you attained it. So the picture that you have in your mind is incredibly important because guess what? If you have a negative picture in your mind, a negative picture in your imagination, your subconscious mind is going to go to work to make that a reality too. Thousands of little micro decisions to guide you towards the negative. So who wants to live with that? Who wants to put your subconscious mind to work as your employee to work for you and work against you? Why would you want to do that? So get a clear picture of your goals, of your objectives, of your vision, of of anything you want to accomplish, anyone that you want to meet, anything that you want to do. I've envisioned getting on a stage that I wanted to to speak on. I've I've envisioned uh, having thousands of people in the room. I've envisioned relationships with top of my heroes in personal development, with Jim Rohns and the Tony Robbins and the Richard Bransons and all the different people. I've imagined those relationships long before they became a reality. And then my subconscious mind went to work and it ground, it, it, it was grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding thousands of decisions until it became a reality. So one, think of something that's important to you. Get it clear in your mind and then let your subconscious mind grind for you. Let it work for you. Let it create results for you. In this book, the, the one that I was just reading over the weekend, He talks about the fact that, you know what, if times are bad for you right now, if the wind is blowing in your face right now, just hang in there because the wind can change. The wind will change. And if the wind's in your face, the wind can change and be be at your back and propel you forward. And, And I really struggled with this message. I really had a difficult time with it. Because I've listened to so much of Jim Rohn, and because if you, if you know anything at all, which I'm an amateur, but if you know anything at all about sailing, um, it doesn't matter what the wind is doing. If it's at your back or if it's in your face, there is a, a way for you to move forward. If the wind is in your face and you have a sailboat, you just go back and forth and back and forth, using that same wind to go forward. 
I will tell you, there's a group of people who are crossing their fingers today and they're waiting for the wind to change. There's a group of people who are hoping and praying that the wind changes. And what I want to tell all of you, if, you're, if any of those, those people are you, is you don't need to wait for the wind to change. The wind, whichever way it blows, can be your friend. If it's in your face, you have a different approach to how you move forward. If it's from the side, you have a different approach to how you move forward. If it's at your back, there's going to be times when it's at your back. Sure, everybody can move forward quickly when the wind's at your back. But when it's not, and it's not most of the time, you have to have a strategy to move forward. We can change the sail, and we can have total control regardless of the wind. We can decide which direction we're going to go regardless of the wind. We don't have to wait for something out there to happen in order for us to be okay. It's not out there, ladies and gentlemen. It's in here. It's not out there. It's in here. So not only do you need to take charge when it comes to setting the sail of your life, we need to let the whole world know while they're all waiting for this wind to change, and it might and it may change. Of course, at some point it's going to change. But it may not change for some people for a long time. We can give them an opportunity and the skills to be able to prosper regardless of the direction of the wind. Do you get what I'm saying to you? It's not out there, ladies and gentlemen. It's right in here. Once you get that, you realize how much power you actually really have in controlling the direction of your life, everything will change for you. Instead of focusing just on the how, one of the skills, not only just the tactical skills of how to do things, but the skills of understanding the human element of what it is that we do. If you know why you need to use your own product or service every single day, then it's easy to develop structures for everybody to learn how to do that. If you know why it's important to build your story, if you know why it's important to go to your events, if you know why it's important to um, share the opportunity, if, it's no, if you know why it's important to utilize third-party tools, if you know why it's important to be able to give a strong testimonial, if you know why it's important to focus on personal development, then the how-to gets easy. And, and if you know why and you get that why strong enough, you can help all of those people that have been in assignment-oriented living for their whole life. In other words, they've been doing what they're told their whole life. A lot of people are waiting for somebody like you who understands why it is that we do what we do to be able to inspire those people to start to do it, to do the how-to, and then eventually they'll develop the why-to. Once I understood this concept of the why, the person who knows how to do something will always work for the person who knows why to do something. Well, I don't want to work for anybody the rest of my life. What I want to do is I want to focus on why am I doing everything? Why does this work in network marketing? Why does this not work in network marketing? I understood all of the mechanical, um, psychological triggers that made our business work. And once I understood the whys, that not only did the hows get easy for me, but it get, became very easy for me to inspire other people to take action because I understood the true reasons why to do something. I wasn't just saying do it because I said so. I could explain um, that philosophy to them. I switched my mind from becoming the best how-to guy I, that you would ever meet to becoming the best why-to guy that you'll ever meet. Changed my business, changed my life. I will tell you, if you implement this in your business, it'll change yours too. You can't afford to mow your lawn. What does that title even mean? Let me back up and give you some context to it. And I think by the end of this show, you're going to agree with me. If you're involved in network marketing, if you're an entrepreneur, you can't afford to mow your lawn. Now here's where this all started for me. I've been mentored by a few different billionaires over the course of my career. And the first one, I, I went to him and I said, you know, I, I want to achieve, I want to move forward. You've had all this success. What do I do? 
how do I break out? How do I create more success for myself? He said, Eric, how much do you want to make in a year? Give me a number. I said, well, a million a year sounds good. You know, two commas, a million dollars a year. That sounds like it would be, you know, a great life. He said, fine. He said, that's a good start. Let's, let's break that down. To make a million dollars a year, you would have to earn approximately $500 an hour in your work time. $500 an hour in your work time in order to be able to earn a million dollars a year. He said, Eric, is there a task that you can do in your business that will earn you $500 an hour over time? I went, well, in network marketing, there actually is. If I'm in front of a prospect, if I'm telling the story, if I'm sharing the product, I'm telling the story, I'm sharing the opportunity, I'm explaining the compensation plan, I'm, I'm, I'm with a prospect, helping them understand what it is that I have to offer. If I'm with that prospect, that over time equals $500 an hour or better. That was my experience. I just didn't spend that much time in front of that many prospects, right? I would, I'd get my, my life was busy with everything else. I said, yeah, I said, yes, uh, I, 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 I have that activity. He said, fine. He said, take every activity that you are doing that's, that, that, you, that can be done by someone else, number one, the activity that can be done by someone else, number one, number two, is, pay, is, is worth less than $500 an hour, and number three, isn't something that's jeopardizing your family or your values, and have somebody else do it. So I said, so wait a minute, so I mow my lawn, you tell me I can't mow my lawn? He said, you can mow your lawn, but mowing your lawn is minimum wage activity. If you want to sell your hour for minimum wage, and there's a task you could do somewhere else that's paying $500 an hour, why would you do that? Call it $15 an hour to mow your lawn. And you have a task that you, that you could get $500 if you're in front of prospects. Every time you mow your lawn, you lose $485. And I went, wow, I thought I was saving money by mowing my lawn. No, it was costing me money to mow my lawn. So here's what I did. I took inventory of every part of my life. I currently, and for decades now, have not done tasks of under $500 an hour, unless it was something with my family, unless it was something that I chose to do that was quality with the relationships in my life. I'm talking about work time. I'm talking about time, thing, tasks that I could do that don't impact my relationships, okay? So I don't mow the lawn. I don't clean the pool. I don't clean out the garage. I don't get groceries. I don't clean the house. I don't do any of that stuff. In our, in our family, we have people help us do those things, and then we focus our tasks, our energy, on the highest producing activity possible. Mastering your emotions, and people ask me sometimes, it's like, are emotions important for an entrepreneur? Managing emotions, does that, does that important? Seems like it would be all discipline and hard work. Well, guess what will cause you to stay disciplined and will cause you to do the hard work is mastering your emotions. Trying to figure out the, the triggers that cause you to act or cause you to freeze. And one of the most interesting concepts, and I learned this from Tony Robbins, he and I were talking this last year um, several times about this concept, it's so interesting. And that is, what is your default emotion? In other words, when poked, when prodded, when, uh, when bored, when either stimulated or not stimulated, what emotion is your go-to emotion? Now, for some people, it's stress. Entrepreneurs, a lot, of, a lot of entrepreneurs like to go, I'm stressed out, I'm just stressed right now. That's their go-to emotion. They, they go into their mind and that is, that's what they go to um, as a default. That's their neutral. 
Okay? Some people use worry to worry about something that might happen, worry about what somebody else might think, worry about some circumstance out of, outside of their control, worry about what's going on with their comp plan, or worry about what's happening with the product, or worrying about what's going on with the international expansion, or worrying about decisions the team is making or the company is making, or worrying about an event that's coming up, or something. That's their default emotion. Some people, it's, it's uh, to fight. Their default emotion is anger. They want to fight. They're looking for an enemy all the time. That's their default emotion. Okay? So we all have a choice, and, and we all have to decide what is the default emotion that's going to serve us, and is the current one that we have the one that's serving us the most? Because if, it, if it's on the negative side, stress, frustration, doubt, worry, anger, all of those, which many entrepreneurs have, if, we, if our default is there inside of that space, it's like putting a, a limiter on our potential. When we're in that space, do you think we are attracting people to us, or do you think are we may be pushing some people away? Are we making people want to be around us a lot, or are we may be only attracting other angry people or other stressed out people? that we can relate to. So there's a choice. Um, there's another range of emotions. Now that doesn't mean you can't bounce into stress, which is just fear. You, can, you, you can't bounce into anger or you know, defending somebody or, or something. You can't bounce into frustration or worry or doubt. But what's the default? Where do you go back to? What's center? What is neutral for you? And for me, it was an interesting exercise to kind of go through this. It's like, wow. Because when I was talking with Tony about it, he was saying that he has so much going on in his life that it's very easy for stress to become his default emotion. So he, he finally realized that, you know, no, that's a choice. I could choose to look at something, anything part of my life and get stressed about it. But my default emotion could I replace that default emotion for passion, for joy, for happiness, for gratitude? Those default emotions. What if your default emotion was gratitude all the time? What if it was joy all the time? Now you might get pushed and get stressed out for a minute, but you come back to joy. You come back to gratitude. You come back to happiness, right? You come back to passion. And there's a difference between passion and anger. If it's anger, that's going to repel a lot of people. If it's passion, it's going to attract tons of people into your life, into your world. So I want you to think about what your default emotion is. Maybe even write down, what is the emotion that you go to most when poked, when something doesn't go perfect, when something unexpected happens, when stressed? What is your default emotion? Where do you go to there? Okay? And just decide that on the other side of that coin, instead of expectation and, and anxiety, it can be appreciation and gratitude. Instead of anger, it could be passion. Instead of worry and doubt, it can be joy and peace. That it's all going to be fine. So we control this. We might not be able to control the pain, and we talk about this at GoPro Recruiting Mastery, we'll talk about this more and more. We might not be able to control physical pain or mental, emotional pain, but we can choose suffering. That's a choice. The pain might not be a choice, but the, our emotional state is a choice. The one thing that Tony told me that just knocked me down is he and I both go up on stage and we give a lot of energy and we're, you know, we're very enthusiastic, we're very energetic, and then for me, when I get off the stage, I like, whew, I throttle back a bit, I reset my batteries. So my stage energy is not my default. It's an exception. So he told me, he said, he said Eric, the biggest change happened in his life. He said, he said to me, uh, when, when we were doing an interview this last year, he said, Eric, the biggest change happened to me in my life this last year was I decided to take the guy that's on stage, I decided to take him home with me. And that was gonna be my new default. 
And I went, wow, okay, that's something completely different. Think about you in your best energetic state, your, your most attractive, your most out, outgoing, your most vibrant state possible. Think about taking that person home with you. Think about that being your new normal. Think about that being kind of the, just a, every day. And the other negative stuff is just kind of here and, here and there. It just comes and it goes. But you have a different default state. Control that default state, you start to take control of your life. All entrepreneurs deal with this issue of self-doubt, of, of challenge, of difficulty, of struggle. And I don't know what it is for you. I mean, for me, I, so many things went through my mind. Maybe this isn't for me. Maybe this just isn't my thing. Maybe uh, other people are made for this, maybe I'm not. Maybe entrepreneurs need to be born. Because uh, I wasn't born an entrepreneur, maybe I just need to be realistic and just go get a job. Um, <clears throat> maybe I don't have the discipline for this. Uh, or some days when I, I would just say, you know, I would get so discouraged with people because I couldn't get people to do the actions that I was willing to do. Maybe I'm just not a good enough leader. Maybe the product isn't you know, valuable enough. Maybe the compensation plan doesn't pay as much as I think it should. Maybe I'm in a country or a, or a part of the world that is, you know, I feel is more resistant to network marketing than any other part of the world. You know? So because of that, I'm gonna struggle or whatever. There's, there's, the list is so long when it comes to reasons to check out reasons to walk away. You miss that rank, you push for that goal, you get embarrassed, you, you fall on your face in front of your group, you go try and do a presentation, it doesn't go very well. You drive across town, you go across the country even to do a, a meeting and nobody shows up. Somebody in your company makes you feel bad or makes you feel small and because of that, you get your feelings hurt. There's so many reasons to quit. And here's my message for you this week. If you're looking for a reason to quit, they're all there. I just gave you a whole bunch of them. There's a whole menu of reasons that you can choose and no one will blame you. You can say, hey, because of this, I decided not to do it and that makes you feel better and that explains it to the world and you move on with your life. There will always be a reason to quit. But if your dream is strong enough, there will always be a reason to stay. There will always be a reason to push through. There will always be a reason to help others. Maybe it's, it's knowing that your product or service is going to be, have an impact on the world and you can't let that go. Or maybe it's you're rescuing people from desperate lives. Maybe it's taking care of those family members that, that maybe can't take care of themselves as, as well as maybe you could help them do. Maybe it's giving to the causes that are important to you. Maybe it's seeing that next person in your group, the, the, the fire light up in their eyes because of you, because you persevered, because you worked when no one else was watching, because you decided to do something um, that other people weren't willing to do. That sense of pride that you did something, that sense of pride that you went through the battle, that, that sense of pride that you stood for something. That's more valuable, in my opinion, than living a life full of regrets, going through the challenge. Understand the challenge is what makes something of you. The challenge is what creates something of you. They say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I think that's true. What doesn't kill you does make you stronger. That doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. It hurts, but it makes you stronger. And I will tell you, it's the struggle for the past, since 1988, when I got involved in network marketing, it's the struggle that forced me to become the person that I am today, and I'm proud of the person that I am today. Without the struggle, if it would have been easy every single day, I wouldn't have become much. I would have been just an immature idiot running around with money versus somebody who's learned and grown and expanded and gotten better. Because even though I had those days when I wanted to quit, I found a reason to stay. I found a reason to keep going. I found a reason to work through my fears. I found a way to conquer the struggle. So I don't know where I find you on this day, 
when this message finds you. But if it's, fine, if it's landing on you on a particularly bad day, just understand this. There's always a reason to quit, but there's also always a reason to stay. Thank you guys so much for watching. I made this video because Joshua Remigio asked me to. So if there's a famous entrepreneur that you want me to profile next, leave in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. I'd also love to know what did Eric say that had the biggest impact on you? What are you gonna take from this video that you're gonna immediately apply to your life or to your business? Leave in the comments. I'm gonna join in the discussion. I also wanna give a quick shout out to Total Greatness. Thank you so much for picking up a copy of my book, Your One Word, and posting that fun picture to Instagram. I really, really, really appreciate it. So thank you guys again for watching. I believe in you. Hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon. That Jim Rohn had a major impact on my life by implanting these ideas, the power of an idea, these ideas into my mind. Self-education will make you a fortune. So formal education, everybody goes through. You kind of have to go through that. But what are you going to do after formal education is done? Self-education will make you a fortune. And I went, wow, okay. He was the one that had me start, because I back, back then, if I read any book, within about two pages, I was ready to go to sleep. I was just exhausted, you know, just like Ugh. But he said, Eric, just start by reading 10 pages a day. Find a book that interests you, read 10 pages a day. You can get through a 300 page book in a month if you do that and start to develop the discipline because I started just listening to audio programs. I did not have any discipline to read. And he made me become a reader. He said, readers are leaders. Self-education, what are you doing to improve your skills all the time? Are you taking charge? And I'm, one of the things I'm most proud of is how much I've educated myself since I left formal education. How much I've educated myself, how many books I've read, how many seminars I've gone to, how many skills I've worked on and developed, how many coaches I've had and mentors I've had in my life in order to be able to get better. Self-education will make you a fortune. Formal education will make you a living. You get a paycheck. Self-education, you get to be financially free. I've read probably two books a week on average for the last 20 plus years. So it's a lot of books, a lot of books. Why? Because Jim Rohn taught me that self-education will make you a fortune and, and if you stop growing, you start dying. So I wanna continue in that growth pattern.